Eva, you've developed a great partnership with Andrew Graham, your co-founder at Borowell. Can you talk about how that partnership dynamic came together? We actually met each other when we were volunteering, so it wasn't that we had worked together formally. We had actually founded a social venture together through Civic Action. And so it was great. It was one of those situations where you meet someone at a conference, you get together in a room, and you're sort of brainstorming. And uh, we ended up running this social venture called Toronto Homecoming for about five years, and that's how we sort of got to know each other. Uh, he then had quit his job and was looking at different opportunities in fintech and told me about the idea and I was super excited about it. And I have to say, I don't think I fit the exact, you know, right. to the, to the checkbox of everything that he was looking for in terms of experience. Uh, yeah, but because you've had a very varied background, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'd done a number of things as a management consultant. I worked in the not-for-profit space for a while, but it was not, you know, the... Uh, consumer finance marketing background that I think would have been the perfect fit for this role. And in the end, I said, look, I'm not exactly sure that being at a startup is going to be perfect for me either. This is not anything I've ever done before. And it was quite different from, you know, my more traditional background. So we decided to try it on a two-week trial and uh, I never left. And that relationship has obviously grown through yeah. both good news and bad news because yeah. I've been involved in enough startups to know that it's never a straight line. That's so right. how did the partnership dynamic fare during those rough moments? Yeah, I think it's super crucial to have someone that you really trust and someone that you can be honest with during those those moments. Um, and I think it's always good to just to have a, a partner and have like a good management team that can sort of pull you back from the <laughs> from the edge no as question. you're walking towards it <laughs> yeah. and provide a bit of perspective as well. And I think that's happened for both of us and for the broader management team as well, where, you know, one person's just like, I can't believe this has happened. What are we going to do? This is a disaster. And then for someone else to provide that perspective. When you think about your career and now your career as a founder, were there any people that had a really significant impact in shaping your path? For sure, there were a number of people who, who had an impact. I think about you know former managers that I've had and colleagues. But one of the things I think that I haven't had is this super high-powered mentor or sponsor you know, who was the president of the company and sort of handpicked me. I, I just never had that kind of relationship. But I think it's been okay. I think I've had different people who've been able to provide help and advice through different challenges. I can think of one person in particular who, whenever we have an HR issue, that's the person I call because of his expertise there. And I would say I've got a great group of peer founders as well through a forum group that has been super helpful. So I think that's one maybe myth to dispel is that you don't have to have a really high powered sponsor who picks you and, and well, sort of grooms that's you yeah, through. I mean, that's certainly the perception out there, right? That right. you need to find someone who's super successful in whatever right. walk of life you're trying to pursue. Right. And you need to get that person on board and helping you to achieve it. But your story right. shows that, that you don't have to have that. Yeah, and I think it can be intimidating for that person if you want them to be that person for you. And I, I think instead of that, if there's someone who you know, I can call once every three months to get some advice on something, I think they're happy to play that role, but they may not want to have the full responsibility of, oh, okay, Eva's career is now my, right. my thing that I have to, to help shepherd. When you think about the dynamic of your peer group and mm -hmm. the people that contribute to it, did you map that out in some way? Have you refined that over time? Or what would be the lessons learned in building that peer group? I think it's really important for it to be diverse. Uh, and in a way, that means you don't have to really map it out or be super strategic about it. Because so there's so many different perspectives. There's so many different perspectives, which I think are really helpful. And whether it's someone, even at an earlier stage, who can remind you of like how far you've come, or if it's someone who's at a later stage and can say, no, I've been through this and this is totally normal, don't worry about it and you'll get through it. Can you think of one example where you were, okay, I've got to go to this peer group for this one because I can't figure it out on my own. I think it's that bottom 5% and the top 5% of your life, right? right. Where uh, there are just things that are either really confidential or you feel like someone who hasn't gone through it or someone who isn't a founder won't understand. And I'm really thankful to have uh, a peer group of other founders that I can go to where, again, confidentiality is, yeah. uh, is the number one rule and you can feel like you can be totally honest and, and open.